Um, so I think I'm gonna do some jumping around a little bit. So I apologize if I'm a little bit scattershot here. This last part of US history, I need to kind of finish up uh, sorting out all my PowerPoints and stuff. They're not quite dialed in. Uh, and so I've kind of got to go back and forth and find some stuff. Uh, but uh, if we continue to do this online thing for as long as it seems, I uh, will definitely spend some time going through and, and reworking my PowerPoint so they're a little more compact and a little more uh, focused so that I can get through lessons a little bit quicker and easier. So today's lesson um, is going to kind of talk about, again, a big topic, but we're just going to kind of talk in generalities and then get to some questions is the Cold War and the Civil Rights era. So the Cold War is actually a pretty big chunk of the test in terms of you might get questions that talk about it or you might hear reference to it a lot. You don't need to know lots of details about it, um, but I wanna spend some time talking about it because you'll definitely hear it come up, okay? So I'll talk about it some and then I will actually pull up my PowerPoint and we'll talk through some slides uh, before we kind of jump back to this. I just want to make sure I talk about some of the key details. So really, so World War II ends, and just like after World War I ends, there's, you know, consequences and fallout, and you have countries kind of on all of these different sides that are not friendly with each other or friendly with each other, depending on their allies. And what you really start to see is this divide between capitalist economies and communist economies, right? And kind of democracy versus communism on the political. And so the kind of leading, or the countries that represent each at this point, at the end of World War II, you have the United States as kind of the most powerful, most visible uh, example of democracy. And you have the Soviet Union, which was what Russia was referred to as, you know, in the 50s and 60s. So you have the USSR uh, or the Soviet Union, and they kind of represent um, the strong or the most powerful communist country, right? And so it's kind of this world struggle or this world battle not in a sense that it's a war, but just in a sense that it's a competition um, between democracy and communism. So that's kind of the essence of the Cold War. The Cold War is referred to as the, the reason it's called the Cold War is because it wasn't actually a war. It never came to, there never was a point when the United States and the Soviet Union went to war, right? It was just this kind of behind the scenes tension of trying to kind of one up each other for world power, right? It's basically what, it was, okay? So we'll go in and we'll talk about some of the, some of the details kind of involved in the Cold War and then we'll just move on, right? So just to make sure I don't skip over some stuff. Again, you know, we have the United States and we have the Soviet Union representing communist nations in this struggle and the Cold War, again, never led to direct fighting between those two superpowers, the US and the USSR, although there were other battles and other wars that came about because of this communist versus democracy um, conflict. Um, but there was also this constant threat of nuclear war. So this is where you really start to see countries increasing their nuclear arsenal. And because World War II ends with the United States dropping the atomic bomb, which had never been done. And so all of a sudden, then there's this race to see who can acquire the most, who can have the most powerful uh, atomic bomb, and so on and so forth. And so all of these countries on both sides are to accumulate nuclear weapons, uh, maybe in the event to use them, but also just to kind of show the other side that they have, right? Um, some of the smaller wars that we'll talk about just real briefly uh, that came about because of this conflict, uh, the Korean War and the Vietnam War, just to name a couple, where you have 
uh, communist versus capitalist uh, sides on both, right? Um, let's see. Uh, the Cold War kind of officially comes to an end in 1991 when, when the Soviet Union is broken apart. And uh, from there, it, the, the conflict kind of peters out a little bit, right? But uh, there's still kind of underlying uh, tones from the, the Cold War today, right? There is still this kind of inherent distrust of communist nations, and likewise, on the other side, they distrust democracy and capitalism to an extent. Right? There's still this tension that exists between some of these different countries uh, that dates back to the Cold War. So let me pull up the PowerPoint, and I'm going to kind of skim through some stuff really quickly. And again, this PowerPoint isn't structured really the way I want it. And so um, I'm just really going to kind of go quick through some slides and skip some of these slides. Um, but I didn't want to just talk at you with just the uh, scanned version of the book. So again, the Cold War, we'll talk a little bit about civil rights. And then uh, I want to make sure we have time to do some questions. All right, so just to kind of give you an idea, uh, the Iron Curtain is this name for this dividing boundary between Western and Eastern Europe. And basically what you have here is this group of countries here kind of controlled by the power of the Soviet Union and essentially communist countries. And over here you have the countries that have some form of democracy or a capitalist economy, right? So there's kind of this big dividing line between the two and again, resulting in that, that kind of friction. All right, so World War II ends and you have the formation of NATO, which is the North Atlantic Trade uh, Organization. I better fact check myself. Regardless, um, uh, NATO is made up of 12 nations uh, of the Atlantic Pact, together with Greece, Turkey, and Germany. And they are created, or NATO is created, for the, def for the purpose of uh, defending them, those countries against, um, essentially, the communist countries on the other side. So in blue, you see NATO. In red, you see the, the countries involved in the Warsaw Pact, which was a defensive pact of, again, the Soviet Union and a lot of those Eastern European countries. And so you start to see um, what looks like aligning for kind of another world war, but it never really gets to that. But, but basically both sides kind of go into their corners, start to get other countries to join their side, and you start to see both sides really strengthening in terms of uh, world power. So again, you have in the 50s, you have the Korean War, and the Korean War, again, is this civil war fought in Korea between North Korea and South Korea, and uh, the reason the United States gets involved because the United States comes to the aid of South Korea to help curb the spread of communism because North Korea wants to institute a communist regime. South Korea wants to institute a democratic government and a capitalist economy. And so the battle ultimately ends in a stalemate. In other words, no side really wins. And um, what happens is basically what still exists today is the country of Korea is split into North and South, right? So it was once one country, and now it still is such where you have North Korea, uh, which is a communist country, and South Korea, which is not, right? And that's still the case today. Um, again, we don't need to spend more time over that. Just to kind of give you an idea, 
these are some of the battles that were fought as a result of the uh, this Cold War mentality, where you have democracy versus. All right. So I'm going to skip over that, and I'm going to skip over that. So one thing that we also want to talk about briefly is technology, because one of the side effects, or not side effects, a result, or I guess you could call it an effect, of the Cold War is there was this intense competition between the United States and the Soviet Union in all aspects of life, of all aspects of culture. And so part of that is the race to space, right? So you see this push to uh, be the first country in the space, be the first country on the moon, all of these different things. And in order to accomplish that, there were some pretty serious technological advances, right? So you start to see technology exponentially grow. Right, like m way more than in any other period in, in history, right? So technology kind of up until this point had kind of incrementally slowly gotten, you know, more and more. But then the Cold War really accelerates that and you see this dramatic upshift in technological advances. And that's because there were so much resources and money and resources put towards coming up with new ideas in order to, on, on both sides, right? The Soviet Union trying to one-up the United States, the United States trying to one-up the Soviet Union, right? So today, we don't really think of Russia as kind of the, the superpower that they once were, uh, but at the time, it, it, was, it was the United States and the Soviet Union and then everyone else in terms of kind of being at the top of kind of the world uh, stage. So. I don't want to talk about these specific examples because like the automobile is an old example, right? From the twenties uh, or from even before that, but you start to see a big advancement in aircraft technology, right? So, you know, the technology in airplanes, in air travel, right? All of these things really undergo a massive uh, boom in technology that ends up having effects not just related to the cold, right? So the fact that we, you know, NASA comes around and we have this big competition to see, you know, who's going to be the first country in space or, you know, put up for satellite and all this thing. And what, and what has that left us today is lots of technology that happened because of that, right? The satellite, the way we use satellites for, TV or you know Google Images or you know all of the, all of those things that we don't really think about you know come from technologies that came about you know, as a result of the United States and the Soviet Union basically competing against each other to see who would be the best. Um, again, I said I would skip through a lot of these things. So then comes. Uh, next, the Vietnam War, which happens uh, after Korea, you know, another 10-ish years after Korea. Um, and again, it's the same kind of thing. We have the country of Vietnam fighting between North and South, and again, over the um, idea of communism, right? So, uh, the, the Vietnam War ends a little bit differently than, than the Korean War in that North and Vietnam don't actually split up. They, essentially the, the people that the U.S. was fighting for, or fight, trying to help against the spread of communists, effectively lost. And Vietnam was, uh, set up as an, a communist nation after the Vietnam War, right? And so the Vietnam War, again, was a, a really long war, um, got drawn out a long time, no definitive winner or loser, but essentially, like I said, the, the country didn't stay split in half, communist and 
and uh, capitalist, it became a communist nation. Okay? All right. So I think that's where I want to leave the PowerPoint. So I'm going to stop there and bring up questions again. Okay. So again, bear with me for my bouncing around here. So, again, the kind of Cold War comes to kind of an end when the Soviet Union breaks apart and is no longer uh, in existence and it's renamed Russia. Uh, the other part of kind of what this topic or what this, this uh, lesson talks about briefly is kind of the civil rights movement. So at the same time, you have all those other things going on at home, at, in, you know, in the United States, there's a lot of change going on uh, for civil rights, for equal treatment of minorities. So in the 50s, you really start to see African-American leaders kind of taking Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, those people, you know, taking a, up, a, up the fight to end segregation in certain parts of the country, which was still going on. Um, discrimination, which again is still something that we fight, but again, this period in the 1950s, there were, there was lots of push to have laws put in place to eliminate some of these things that were still going on, right? So you had, um, the integration of public schools that were no longer quote unquote separate but equal schools, right? You had, you know, prior to the 1950s, there were still states that had you know, all African American schools and white schools, right? And they didn't mix. So you had that come to an end. You had, you know, other public facilities. It was no longer legal. We got amendments passed to the Constitution that said it was no longer legal or constitutional to allow, you know, or to segregate people based on race, right? Um, voting laws, protecting the rights of minorities and when it came to voting, um, and a whole kind of other host of different laws, again, with the, the goal of finally uh, reaching equality among all people, right? And so, again, that's a, a, a goal that we're still trying to reach for today. It's not like the 50s, it came about and we solved the problem, right? But a lot of the advancements and the reason we are where we are today uh, can be traced back to a lot of the work done in kind of this time frame, okay? Um, and then again, just going back to the idea of technology. So some of the other areas where technology really advanced uh, during this time, during this Cold War period, uh, science, medicine, right? Computers, computers really came about, you know, during this time frame, as, as a result of people uh, needing it. Again, not that NASA invented the computer, but you know, you have, the space race really push computer technology a long ways. And eventually you get to the point where we get, you know, the idea of the PC or the personal. Because before that, computers were these giant things that were stored in office buildings and government buildings. And it wasn't even a thought that people would have their own computer because computers were giant, right? And so when people came around, thinking, oh, well, this is some technology that we can, you know, shrink down and package for everybody. That was a huge, a huge shift, right? And obviously today, you know, we wouldn't be where we are literally right now if it wasn't for computers and, and the technology that came about, right? So again, long story short, this kind of battle between the United States and the Soviet Union, it led to a lot of negative things, right? Vietnam War, the Korean War, all these different things, but it also had some positives. Without without the Cold War, we wouldn't be where we are today, techno technologically. Right. And so, again, uh, I know that's kind of a fast run through of such a giant topic, 
but if we need if we need to circle back around to any of this, we can always do it later. Okay. So for the last 10 minutes, I want to at least look at some of these practice questions. So first, let's just start off with number one. Okay. Hard enough. Number one says the conflict between sorry the conflict during the second half of the 20th century between the United States. Soviet Union was called the Cold War because it involved right? In 1991, the blank finally brought the Cold War to an end. All right, so let's look at number one. So the reason it was called the Cold War okay, is because it involved communists and capitalists, two countries at the far north of Earth, the threat of nuclear war, or no, no direct combat. So I don't feel like we need to run through all of those options, right? Remember, the Cold War was called that. It was referred to as a Cold War because there was no actual fighting between those two countries, right? So no direct combat would be the right answer for number one. And number two, in 1991, the blank finally brought the Cold War to an end. We have the destruction of the Berlin Wall, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, separation of East and West Germany, or the death of Mikhail Gorbachev. All right, so, again, remember, we talked about briefly, and if we go up here and we look and see what it says here, the Cold War ended in 1991 with the breakup of the Soviet Union and the end of communism. Okay. Goes on to talk about some of this other stuff in the late 1980s, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev had tried to reform the communist government, but the loosening of Soviet control had led to the collapse of many communist governments. The Berlin Wall, which separated East and West Germany, was torn down. With communism no longer so threatening, world politics became less tense, but also more un That's kind of that paragraph that it's going off of. And even though it's phrased a little bit differently and uses some different verbiage, the right answer would be the second one, dissolution of the Soviet Union. The dissolution means the breakup of, right? So again, one of the big things when it comes to the social studies test is vocabulary. So the best thing you can do is just immerse yourself in as much reading as you can, do practice questions, get familiar with stuff, and also don't panic if you don't know something, right? If you don't know a word, you're still hope that you can figure out the right answer. Don't just immediately give up. All right, so let's look at number two here. Uh, hopefully that's not too zoomed out. Uh, but anyway, number two says, which of the following best summarizes the message of the cartoon below? Okay, so I'll try to go through and read through these captions and then we'll look at the, the answer choices. So we've got two, two guys, right? So this guy is saying, what's that you're holding over me? And this guy says, it's a nuclear bomb. I'm going to drop it on your head. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, the next part, this guy, or the guy that had the nuclear bomb drop or held over his head, now says, no, you won't, or I'll drop a nuclear bomb on your head. So now he's re responded by taking a nuclear weapon and holding over, over the other guys. And then finally, this guy says, ah, peace and stability through nuclear balance. If only my arms would stop trembling. Okay, so let's examine the answer choices and see what best summarizes the message in that cartoon. A, nuclear bom bombs are extremely destructive. E, expanding U.S. nuclear capabilities is a good idea. C, the buildup of nuclear arms increases fear and instability, not peace. Or D, the threat of nuclear war is lessened if both superpowers have equally powerful weapons. So, like with most, let's read out some of the weakest. Okay. Um, I'd get rid of A first. Nuclear bombs are extremely destructive. That is definitely true. They are extremely destructive. But is that the message that the cartoon is sending? Is that the, does that summarize the point? No. 
it, it's it's a it's implied and it's a kind of a given fact. We know that they are, but it doesn't really summarize the message in the cartoon. Okay. The other one I'd get rid of is B. Expanding U.S. nuclear capabilities is a good idea. The overall tone of this cartoon isn't that nuclear weapons are good, right? It's kind of there, there's some satire and there's some kind of poking fun at nuclear arms. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, it's not overtly negative. Right? In other words, it's not obviously negative, but they're kind of kidding around at the fact that nuclear weapons are a good idea and not, if not implying that they actually are, right? So A and B would be the two I'd get. So then I'd look at the, the, the last two. The buildup of nuclear arms increases fear and instability, not peace. D, the threat of nuclear war is lessened if both superpowers have equally powerful weapons. And for me, the kind of part of the cartoon that gives away the answer, right, is the very last thing this guy says. He says, if only my arms would stop trembling, which implies what? That he can't hold it forever. Eventually, he's going to what? Drop it, okay? If, if, this, if this statement wasn't there, then I guess the best answer would be D, right? If you took away that last bit. But the fact that it says that he ends up saying, well, this is all great, except for I'm trembling and I can't hold this forever, and eventually I'm going to drop, right? Implies that the best answer here is probably C. Buildup of nuclear arms increases fear and instability, not that, that that makes sense, okay? Or at least that's how I would look at it if it would be answering the question. All right, so let's look at one more. We're not going to do all of these. Um, let's skip three and let's see if we can do four and five. But let's for sure do four. Number four says, which of the following goals would a civil rights activist be most likely to pursue? A, getting Congress to enact laws to restrict the sale of firearms. B, petition for a city ordinance requiring those selling real estate to select a buyer without regard to race. C, getting local companies to stop polluting the environment. Or D, working with local clergy to publicize a worship service open to people of all religions. Okay. So, all of those things are potentially positive things, depending on your personal outlook or right or your the way that you feel about the various things mentioned. But only one of them specifically focuses on the equal treatment of people of all races. Right, the other ones don't get at equal treatment of different races at all, or at least direct. Right, so the only one that makes sense here is B petition for a city ordinance requiring those selling real estate to select a buyer without regard to race. That would be of those four options, that would be the one that a civil rights activist would most likely pursue. As easy as that, okay? And then last, number five, which of the following is a conclusion about technology rather than a supporting detail, okay? I had questions like this a lot. So let's see if we're getting more comfortable with it. Again, we're just trying to point out the difference between a conclusion and a detail, A, Reliance on technology has increased pollution. B, cars cause air pollution. C, coal generating power plants cause acid rain pollution. Or D, the ease of manufacturing disposable items has led to land pollution at landfill sites. Interesting in the fact that um, it's not clear to me what information we're supposed to be referencing. Okay, so let's do this one together and then I'll, I'll find the answer in the back. Because this one, this is one of those that uh, I think is worded kind of poorly and doesn't, it isn't, isn't clear what it's 
it is clear what it's asking. It's not clear the information that we're going off, right? So I would throw out B and C at least for sure. Cars cause air pollution. That sounds to me like a detail, like a supporting We know cars emit polluting pollution into the air, right? C, coal generating power plants cause acid rain pollution. I don't actually know that that's true, uh, just off the top of my head, but that sounds to me, again, like a detail rather than something that you would conclude based on a detail, right? So A, reliance on technology has increased pollution, or D, the ease of manufacturing disposable items has led to land pollution at landfill sites. Between those two, and I'm going out on a limb, the last time I did this I was wrong, Based on the, those two options, A sounds like a conclusion and D sounds like a supporting detail to me, just in the way they're worded, right? A, reliance on technology has increased pollution. D, the ease of manufacturing disposable items has led to land pollution, okay? So let's see if we're right. Let's see if A really is the conclusion and D is a detail. 83, well. I'm going to start to feel pretty dumb if I go 0 for 2 on these. Right. A, reliance on technology has increased pollution. It says this is a conclusion. In other words, a general statement about a topic. Other choices are details that support this conclusion. So again, even the, the reason this was odd, and I know I'm over a couple minutes, I'll wrap it up real fast. Uh, the reason it's odd is because typically you're given this question based on a paragraph that you can go back and reference, right? So here, we're not given any, given any paragraph to reference, we're just asked to read based on the way that they're worded and the way that they're written, which one of these four is written as a conclusion. In other words, a generalization about something, whereas a detail is a specific fact or example. Right? And so from the way that they're written, A is the only one that's written in a general set, in a general term that can be applied to different things. Right? So that's why A is the right answer. Okay, so I'll stop there. Sorry for going a couple minutes long. Um, make sure you tune into Martin's class if you want help with reading at 1215. And I will be back for my usual science class uh, today at 115. So I'll let you guys get out of here, and I will talk to you next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.